I paint my own reality. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to, and I paint whatever passes through my head without any other consideration. This is the story of Frida Kahlo. for joining us on Opera Avengers. I'm Alejandra Martinez, your guide to demystifying opera, an art form created by the people, for the people, and of the people. Today's podcast is brought to you by FreshBooks.com. Move your small business's accounting to the cloud with a free 30-day trial on www.gofreshbooks.com slash opera. Additional support is brought by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash opera. Choose from over 180,000 titles to read on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. As always, this podcast will include spoilers. In opera, there are so many nuances to absorb that knowing the story beforehand allows you to sit back enjoy the performance without worrying about missing a subtitle or two. So think of our podcast as your cheat sheet and be free to enjoy every minute of high-flying opera. Today's episode will be a little different from our previous ones. I'm coming to you straight from Southern California after singing in an extremely successful run of Frida, an opera by Robert Xavier Rodriguez. Composed in 1991, this opera is a biographical examination of the life of Mexican painter Frida Kahlo. If you don't know the name, you've probably seen her face from one of her many self-portraits, sometimes with monkeys, occasionally surreal, but always a true reflection of herself. Frida's legacy as a person has touched the lives of many. She was a strong Mexican woman in a male-dominated society. She did not hide features that might have seemed more masculine, like her facial hair. Frida suffered many illnesses, and a terrible accident left her disabled and in pain for most of her life. During her tumultuous marriage to fellow painter Diego Rivera, she had numerous affairs, including affairs with women. Frida has come to represent so much for so many different groups of people. It seems that everybody can see a piece of themselves in her self-portraits. Frida, the opera, makes no attempt to hide the scars of her life. The book, written in English and Spanish by Migdalia Cruz and Hilary Blecher, is sometimes sacred in its handling of its heroine, and sometimes profane. The chorus sings at the end of the opera, her colors go out into the world, vivirán pa siempre, they will live forever. And yet, Frida herself sings such softly sensual lyrics, such as, It's in the touch for me, fingers sweeping gently across my lips, a tongue in the soft wrinkled folds of my hand. La Pelona, death, personified in Spanish, especially in Mexico, as a woman, pursues her throughout. This June, I performed in a production of Frida with Long Beach Opera, an innovative company led by visionary director Andreas Mitisek. Mitisek is known for staging opera in uncommon spaces. The majority of our shows took place in the Museum of Latin American Arts Sculpture Garden, with one performance at Grand Performances in downtown Los Angeles. Both venues presented some challenges for the opera singers. We are not often trained to sing outside or with body mics, but were spiritually appropriate for the opera and expanded our audience. Our production of Frida was in fact the first opera staged for grand performances, and we were thrilled to receive a standing ovation. It even seemed the skyscrapers that stretched overhead stood a little taller just for us. Christoph van Gisper was our music director and conductor, and he deftly guided us through a musically and stylistically complex score. He demonstrated immense sensitivity to the drama and musicality of Rodriguez's score, inspired by both classical and folk elements. Our entire cast and orchestra performed beautifully under his baton. 
our cast included Laura Vireya as Frida Kahlo, Bernardo Bermudez as Diego Rivera, David Castillo, Joanna Ceja, Jonathan Lacayo, and yours truly as Calaveras, spirits of death that transformed into various figures in Frida's life. Though a small cast of six, this opera has been performed with as many as 80 singers. However, Mitisak's inspired staging served the libretto and the music well, given the impression that we were witnessing Frida's own life flashing before her eyes before her untimely death. In fact, as we embodied various figures, including at times the American Rockefellers and Fords, I felt that we echoed the spirit of the Teatro Campesino, an activist theatrical group that, in Comedia dell'Arte fashion, entertained and inspired protesters on the picket lines during the United Farm Workers Movement. The unsung heroes of every opera production are in its production staff. These are the people you don't always hear about, but are so important to every opera production. The stage management team has many important responsibilities. They record all of the staging, address any issues or questions both the directorial staff and musicians might have, and on the day of the show, they command the lighting and sound cues and manage cast and crew entrances and activities backstage. We were so lucky to have Cressa Amundsen as our stage manager and Anthony Rivera as our assistant stage manager. Our hair and makeup was designed and applied by Jennifer Corona and Gladys Gonzalez, two incredible makeup artists who made all of us look beautiful night after night. Even between quick changes, they worked like coaches in a boxing ring to quickly dab off some of our sweat, reapply anything they needed to, and send us back on stage. The costumes were designed and managed by Magdalena Guillen and Estrella Fernandez, who dressed all of us in gorgeous colors that perfectly matched Frida's setting and tone. But their job did not end there, as they were always ready in the wings to help us dress and to handle any wardrobe malfunctions sustained in the heat of active performing. We always looked great. If you have ever wondered what goes into making an opera happen, you now have just a small glimpse into how complicated and yet so rewarding it can be. I also want to mention our amazing director of production, Holly Alborn, who worked tirelessly to keep Frida running smoothly. Among our other staff, we had our master electrician, Brandon Hawkinson, our board operator, David Patrick, our AD head and stagehand Eduardo Martinez, our stagehands Jamie Collins and Daniel Dominguez, our head carpenter slash stagehand Tyson Salcido, and our rehearsal accompanist Netta St. Clair, who played for us tirelessly in every rehearsal and, of course, accompanied our show as well. Without these people, this production of Frida would not have been possible. The story of Frida Kahlo is something that was part of my own personal childhood. She has become the patron saint of being true to yourself and honoring your work. She has inspired music and even a feature film starring Salma Hayek. Be sure to check it out and learn all about her paintings and incredible life. It was such a great honor to perform with Long Beach Opera. And if you find yourself in the area, make sure you check them out. Their next season opens in October with Minotti's The Consul starring the amazing Patricia Rosette. Until next month, I'm Alejandro Martinez. Thank you for listening. Opera Avengers is a production of Great Lakes Light Opera, an organization based out of Cleveland, Ohio, dedicated to bringing opera and all local musical arts to everyone. Want to learn more? Visit us at greatlakeslightopera.com. Want to help out? Check our donation page or email us at megan at greatlakeslightopera.com. Oh, and let us know what you'd like to hear next.